But I tell you what, our next guest. She's from ATL. Well, she, she's, she's from the east side. Oh, on that side, I, I got to get clarification. Is it Decatur or east side out there like Panola, all that kind Because they, they say it's great in Decatur. Y'all know when we had CC LaFleur on the show, whenever I have to contradict that it's, it's greater in the SWAT, um, we have a little beef. But it's all good. Because it's all good sportsmanship. Sportsmanship. She's a newcomer to the scene, but definitely not new to music. She's a hip hop artist right here, east side of Atlanta. And I'm so happy that she joined us today because she had a busy schedule today, but she took time out to join us, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show, Nate. Hey. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? How y'all doing? What's up? <laughs> See, only on real talk. <laughs> How you been? I'm pretty good. How are you, actually? Ah, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm just having fun. It's Thursday night. Uh, one of the two of the best nights of, the, of my night, Monday nights and Thursday nights, when we get to do the show, and especially because the show is all about supporting independent artists. Like you heard earlier today, um, there's a big book expo going on down at the Green Room this uh, Sunday, um, and, and then having you on as well because that's what the show is about: supporting independent artists. And, and before we talk about how you got into the business um, as a independent independent artists, um, there's a grind that you have that is none other. Uh, tell us about that grind and, and where you got that from growing up on the east side of Atlanta. Well, you know, I just uh, was always taught if you don't do it yourself, it probably won't get done right. I grew up, you mm. know, to a two-family household, and uh, my father worked real hard until he passed away, and he uh, instilled a whole lot in, in me. And I just, you know, I worked hard. I worked relentless because I got to, you know, feed my kids. I'm more than just a rapper. I'm a mother. I'm a friend, you know. So living on the east side taught me about good people and, you know, just how to grind. Most of my family is, is from the east side. Shout out to all my family down in Duval, Jacksonville. But, you know, you just got to do what you got to do to take care of business. And I'm one of those people that's always going to make sure that, even if I got somebody else on my team, you know, working towards the same goal, I'm going to make sure that I do what I got to do because, I, you know, I feel like I'm a boss and I, you know, steer my own life where I needed to go. There you go. That's what it's about. It's about creating creating your own creating your own hype and creating your own buzz, and, and it seems as if you're doing a great job about that with that. And, and talking about your dad, sorry to hear about your dad, um, but your dad was very influential as far as your music is concerned because I, I read that you used to listen to some of those those albums back in the day, and I think your your, your dad was probably a, like a, he was a big fan of like Luther Vandross, Michael Jackson, people like that. How much of an inspiration was was those uh, those twelve inch records for you but uh yeah i remember being little at the house party you know playing you know back in the day uh we lived off glenwood for a minute and of course you had the house party going on the loud music and it, it to me it wasn't i wouldn't even worry about what was going on with the party stuff it was the music and a lot of those records um spoke to you as you know when you want to party or spoke to you about a situation and you know listening to those having being able to listen to those music that music on the weekend is when you know there's no work but we're cleaning up the house raking up the yard you know what i'm saying spending family time and really listening to those records it, it influenced me a whole lot as far as you know knowing how to express myself through music and knowing that <clears throat> that music actually you know touches somebody else as well Wow. In the chat room, I'm in uh, looking in the chat room, and uh, Survive365 told me to tell you uh, much love from Rains High. You know, you know about Rains High? Rains High, that's, that's uh, down in Jacksonville. That's Duval. That's, uh, I believe a couple of my cousins graduated from down there. So, yeah, mm-hmm. shout out that's, to you No doubt. No doubt. When, when, you, when you look back on where it all started for Unique, do you, can you re, do you remember that point where you said I'm gonna take what I'm doing as a hobby because I you know I read that you were beatboxing and you were doing performances and things like that but there was something that sparked you and to, to help you get into the studio. 
Oh, wow. Um, well, basically, um, I have a cousin that uh, kind of inspired me as far as really writing music. Um, and that's where I started the beatboxing or whatever. He's over in Germany now, uh, still working. Um, that's uh, Dr. Eleven for y'all. Shout out, love you. But um, basically, I just started off, like like I said, writing or whatever, and I never thought about it as a career or anything like that. I was going to be a doctor. But um, I think I got to a point where uh, I was already a, a single parent, actually about 18, 19. So, you know, inspiration to those that uh, think that their mistakes are supposed to stop them, but, you know, they make you work harder. But um, I was sitting around one day. I had bought a house, lost my job, and um, came across, across a, a passage in the Bible about the gifts that was given to three wives, to three men, and the one that buried them, God gave his gift and uh, gave it to someone else. You know, so I was I had come to a point where I thought about what were really my gifts and how I would use them to get wealth, because um, that's what they're made to do. And uh, basically ended up with a studio in my house. Uh, someone needed a place to stay. Ended up with a studio there, learned how to work the equipment. And I sat in two months and made up my first mixtape, you know. And so, um, I mean, that's where it, it was sparked from. That's where it actually started. And uh, they actually, I went in the studio. They was listening to uh, a track, and I was like, I like it. And uh, he was like, well, if you can write to it, you know, you can have it. He went out the room for about an hour, came back. I didn't know nothing about bars, how to format it or nothing, but I wrote a whole song. And he came back in, we recorded it, everybody was like, wow, you know, all right. So we went from there. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's just been a passion of mine since then. It's been, you know, something that kind of comes natural. I love to write, and I, I like to, like I said, express myself through songs. Now, since you love to write, you know, excuse me, you know, one of my uh, lifetime goals is to do like an eight or a sixteen on somebody's song. So, like, two questions I have for you are: one, can you write me like an eight or a sixteen? And then the second part of it is: can I perform on one of your songs? <laughs> hey, you're you're welcome. I got you. <laughs> hey, y'all heard that sarcastic laugh after I said that? Yeah, I ain't going to get on one of us songs. Y'all heard that. Hey, hey, hey let me ask you a question. Your voice, huh? voice kind of sexy, you know what I'm saying? So I, I probably could, you know, go ahead and write your verse and put you on there. We, we can go. Girl, I it's love you to it's death for saying it's that. It's what pro tools can do. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Girl, I love you to death. You're always welcome on the show for saying that. Let me ask you this. If, if I, let me throw these names out here to you. You tell me some of the first things that come to your mind, okay? Okay. Outcast. Bums over Baghdad. Now, great inspiration. Definitely part of, part of the inspiration for uh, my music. Um, I love those guys. I really do. Uh, I ain't never been a groupie or nobody, but I, I respect good music, you know, feel good music, dance music, also, you know, message music, and that's that's what they're all about. What about Queen Latifah? Great inspiration. Uh, big businesswoman, you know, I see her all across the screen. I aspire, I, you know, aspire to be, you know, running up where she is at some point real soon. And let's go back a little bit. Let, let's talk about when when people talk about some of the greatest rappers of all time. This guy usually comes in first or second, with, without a doubt. Uh, Tupac. When you think of, when you think about what Tupac left behind, um, as far as a legacy is concerned, what do you think Tupac? What is Tupac's legacy to you? To me, uh, Tupac's legacy is, you know, to to make good music, to to put out what you're feeling. And, you know, if they don't like it, they ain't got to. But it's all, it's a message in it. And, you know, stand up for whatever you believe in and don't let anybody make you feel like what you believe in is wrong. Mm -hmm. Now, when, uh, when I talk with uh, Chandra about having you on the show, one of the things that she admired and, and, and definitely spoke highly about you uh, was about the message that was in your music. If if you had to explain to America 
the message and your music, um, what, what what comes to mind about the message that you're looking to put out when it comes to your songs? Um, basically, um, 